wandering around in the greenhouse this morning looking for some wildlife and look what I found. I found this great big Aussie, whatever you want to call him. Hi, Hello Bobby. Murray, how are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing up Long here? Long time no see. Oh, really? uh, what are you, you doing up here in Queensland? Mate? Well we had to come up doing? for a special birthday party and um, there was one place I had to call and have a look at all these things that you can't grow and uh, <laughs> it looks like if somebody's been proven wrong because uh, Everything is in abundance here. Look at those pawpaws. I'm going to pinch one of them before I go home. Yeah, you're sure. You'd be welcome to one. <laughs> what do you think of these sleepy cod? Have a look at them. Yeah, look at them, eh? Just laying around sleeping. I know why they call them sleepy cod. They just lay there and sleep. Yeah, doing look nothing. Look at the size of them. And Milne, tell me, what do you got growing at your place at the moment down there in Victoria? All right, at the moment we've got in uh, some tomatoes. We've got um, uh, beetroot. Big beetroot as big as footballs. Yeah, and um, garlic, onions... Um, a bit of lettuce, and as I said to other people, that I don't grow stuff that we don't eat. I can't see any point in growing a lot of stuff just to use up the stuff. But I'd rather grow bigger and better of what we need and what you use on a daily basis. What we use, yeah. and uh, I find that you know that's the best. Like uh, last year, I had in a hundred fish. Yep. We end up giving half of them away. Were they trout? Yeah. 100 trout, eh? Yeah. And they were big. They were about two kilos. They got yeah. up there. Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, and, uh, but I end up giving half of them away. So this year I've only put in 50. Yeah, okay. Because, you know, you put in the extra feed and the extra time. and what you, I don't mind giving them away. I, I love giving them away. But normally when somebody comes in, you'll see if you look on the forum, or anyone that's visited, they normally go away with a trout or something like that yeah. to eat. And, but yeah. That's the point about backyard... Um, home system, isn't it? Yeah. Is that you're growing for your own use, so you don't have to grow a whole pile of fish. You're not trying to uh, no. feed the neighbour. No, no, no. You, yeah. uh, mine is just a, a home hobby, and as I said to somebody, it's got to be a pleasure and not a chore. Yeah, you know, exactly. You only want to be able to, um, you know, look after it. You go out fun. and feed the fish, and like, here's another statement of mine. Like when I first started, I bored everyone with. Um, with you know talking aquaponics and uh, you know all that now i don't even worry about it all i do is if i think i, I feed the fish if i don't they, they can look after themselves for four or five days yeah they okay. won't hurt and you just eat the fish and eat the vegetables the trouble is milner i'm always telling everyone lately when everyone finds out how easy this really is i'll be out of a job <laughs> <laughs> oh no i don't think so yeah. no there's always a call for these things and yeah, they're, yeah. they're quite good quality and uh yeah no i like the uh, the concept of them and like yeah. Well, you know, there's, we've, we've found since we've been in this uh, aquaponics business that probably 20% of the people we come in contact with want to buy a ready-made kit, yep. and 80% and of people want to do it themselves. Yep. And mm. uh, so that's why our new video's got a whole lot of stuff in it for people who want to do it themselves. And, mm. and you're a do-it-yourself, aren't you? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's your slogan on the bottom of your thing? If it's free, pick it up. <laughs> And if it if it ain't bro if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, because you see a lot of people they mess too much with. It. Oh, and another one is is the kiss principle. Yeah. Keep it s simple, stupid. Yeah, exactly. But you know, a lot of people tend to be too um, technical with it. and yep. Want to have this and that. And they want to have monitoring equipment. And yeah. Yeah. There's no and, need to. And Milton, I've just got to ask you the million dollar question: How long have you been doing this? Are you a, are you a newbie? You've been doing this for a couple of weeks, or no, no. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's just ticking over four years now. I really got interested in it. When we retired back to Sunbury, I built a glass house and, well, bought a glass house, stole a glass house, I got a glass house. <laughs> and uh, then after that, um, I was going to do hydroponics. And then that, the famous, uh, and everyone talks about it, the famous uh, Gardening Australia thing with Joel come Absolutely. on. And yeah. I looked at it and I thought, geez, that's a good idea. So. Joel Malcolm's suburban backyard is not very big, but it's extremely productive, with fruit trees and vegetables, and they're all thriving. However, this is no ordinary garden, because of all things, fish are an integral component. Joel uses a system called aquaponics, where wastewater from fish tanks is pumped into gravel-filled beds to fertilise his plants. Mm, the water let's see, I wonder what I can use. Well, there was no one at the moment selling stuff. Uh, like all it was was used was blue barrels and uh, whatever. Well, yeah, all right. Well, we'll try this and this and this and then it started. Mine, my system started off with two IBCs, yep. uh, three grow beds, and it's now evolved to four, four well, five thousand litres of, of of water. 
and I think there's about 10 grow beds and about 10 or 12 wicking beds. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, the first advice is to think about it, plan it, sit down and then ask a lot of questions because it's easier to do it the first time it, rather than to go and recut and redo it and rehash it and that. You think about it and ask so many questions it's not funny. Yeah. Bore everyone with questions. And there's lots of information around, isn't there? Oh, yeah, there's plenty of information yeah. on the forums and, um, yeah, there's some, some good forums around and, uh, yeah, and others. And don't forget to mention the good DVDs that you can get too. <laughs> yeah, well, there's, there is good good DVDs. There's also a couple of good good books that's been yep, put out. that's and, right, yeah. Um, yeah, no, there's there's a lot of information around. The best part is it's free. Yep, it's and it's not free, It's not yeah. these shoosters like they have in America trying to sell you you know, a whole system, and it, it definitely works, and you can raise um, 500 kilos of fish and so many things on a on a system, and I think there's going to be a lot of people find that it's going to fail. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah, so in here we've got, couple of, big jade we've got a couple, of, couple of big jades here. This is the one we like to show off, show yeah. off because they're quite big. Yeah. And they're hiding up the back now. See, here's the really big fella. Look at him. Look yeah. at the size of that thing, would you? Yeah. Do you want me to catch him out again? No, no, leave him. No. Yeah. Don't stress he's, him out. He's so big, it's just frightening. That is one advice that I, I learned early in the thing, like when everybody come, I'd get a net and I'd dive in there and pull them out, and, that, and it stresses the fish, fish out no end. Yeah. You've got to yeah. have a nice tank like that and just show them off, and, and rather than stress them out, it yep, that's works right. a lot better. See our couple of different varieties of beetroot yep. coming on there? Yeah, they're and, going um, well, aren't they? They are. And, of course, they're starting to bulb up, as you can see. Yep. So they'll be good. Well, some of the beetroot I got at home now is, oh, I reckon about that, that, that big. That big, eh? Uh, big as the pawpaws up there. And uh, I've got a, about four different varieties of capsicum here. Actually, I don't have much luck with capsicum. I've got to be honest. Yeah. Uh, we get, you know, we get enough for for our own use, but uh, I don't know why. But I don't have a real lot of luck with them. How do you go with capsicum? All right. I, uh, I haven't had any luck with capsicum. Uh, uh, chilies really well. Yeah. Uh, there was one, I think, one ch chili plant I got over fifty. 50 bulbs of it. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I've got a um, bird's eye chili tree in there which grows berserk. Have a lot of luck with cabbages and collies. Yeah, they grow well, and, don't they? Uh, look at that, solid as a rock. Yeah. yeah, no, they really grow well. Gee, those lemons look healthy, don't they? Yeah, this, uh, these these are a bit over a year old now. They're about uh, probably nearly 18 months old. Yep. Since And they've grown well. This lemon tree has done not as well as the others, but it's finally setting some fruit, which is good. Mm -hmm. uh, the orange tree, you can see, is setting some fruit there. Yep. Uh, we got one great big orange off it last year, so this year hopefully we'll get four, and next year maybe ten. Mm. And this is the little um, uh, Tahitian lime tree. So is this a little separate system running by itself? No, these three are all hooked up together. Okay. And, uh, and where's the fish there? Uh, there's three or four fish in each one. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And we've got this here purely just to uh, for the fruit trees, because mm. I want to build a fruit grove, you know, have yep. a whole... Yep. Range and, and I, the idea is to have one of these for each fruit tree. That's the idea. Ultimate idea. Do you find you get enough oxygen in these? Or? Yeah, the fish mm. are doing well. Yes, yeah. the water's joined up. You know, they're joined yep. up, so this, the pump is pumping to all three mm -hmm. out of the central tank here, and they just balance out. Right at the moment, they're a little bit over full because of the rain we've had. Yep. Well, but yeah, the fish do fine. It's virtually like your uh, chop system from one to the other to the other. Yeah, that's right. And they same, all balance out. Same old thing. Yeah, Milne, I just want to show you. Like you, I've got grow beds that are over four years old. Um, here's, here's an example, whenever I lose a pawpaw off the tree because of the possums or whatever, I just bury it in the grow bed and uh, we'll just see what we find. Look what we find. Look at the worms that are working on that pawpaw to break it down. You can see, you can see there where the worms have been eating away at the pawpaw as it decays. And look at that for a bucket of worms. <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't it? Is that healthy? Yeah, or is that thick? Yeah. <laughs> I bury a lot of banana skins in mine. Oh, banana skins? Ex extra potassium. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, you want to see the worms there. The skin only lasts about four days. And it's and gone. It's completely gone. Totally disappeared, yeah. Mm. You Absolutely. Can't find it. Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, banana, that's true. Banana is very high in potassium, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So it's a great natural way to add potassium to your system. Yeah, this is a little wicking bed we've got running here that's got sweet potato growing in it. I've just brought my worms over from the other bed and I'll just plonk them in here. And uh, look at that, look at that bunch of worms. We'll just have another look at it. Look at that. There's hundreds of them. Yep, just and drop that in and you'll find They're it. just going to find their way down to the wicking bit. There's probably already a heap of worms in there, but... Probably is. Just to make sure there's many more. And I just want to, yeah, have a look at the sweet potato, Mill. be nice for lunch. Yeah. Look at 
a little bit bigger, but you know. I'd like to leave them there a bit. Yeah, what about that one? Mm. Like, yeah, I'd like it to be a bit bigger, but oh, and there's another one there. Look, they're everywhere. Yep. The actual bed is full of them. If you bury your hand down here, you can feel them everywhere. Wicking beds are great for growing your root crops like sweet potato, regular potato, carrots, beetroot, although beetroot does well in regular aquaponics. What we've got is a bed here. This is a nice fiberglass one, which is 400 mil deep. And the first 90 mils. Do you need the 400 mil? Not really, no. You really don't need it that deep. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you like to read around, you'll find most material suggests, strangely enough, 300 mil to be the ideal size. Mm -hmm. But it will work on shallower or deeper, or deeper as we find, yeah. yeah. Um, so, okay, this particular one just happens to be 400 mil deep. The first 90 mil is filled up with vermiculite. Then we have a layer of shade cloth over that to separate the vermiculite from the, the, from the lovely... Um, compost we've got here, composted soil. As you can see, this has got some vermiculite in it. It's composted material. It's um, it's really, really nice Very stuff. Very fibrous. And, yep. Yeah. And, then what? and of course, the way it works is we have a, a pipe here, which is 90 mil in diameter, or three and a half inches for the Americans, which goes down and right across the full width of the bed, it runs underneath at the bottom. And the underneath part has got slots in it, or you could drill holes in it if you couldn't get slotted pipe to let the water flow out and spread out. And what you're actually doing is creating an underground reservoir of water, basically. Simple as that. There's no great mystery about it. And what happens is the water wicks up by capillary action and the bed is always perfectly moist and the, the vegetables get exactly what they need. Now, one other point we should stress that on the side down the back here, you can't see it, but we have a tap that allows the water to drain out because this one's outdoors. Should we get a lot of rain, we don't want the bed to flood. So when it gets up to the 90 mil deep, any excess water runs out. How do we water this? We water this in summertime, probably once a week I fill up through here. I don't water over the top. I fill up through here with water out of my fish tank. So I've got fish water going in there. In the winter time, it's probably only once a month. That's wicking beds. I've got one, it's, all, it's, all it's got in is cocoa fibre, yep. the cocoa peat, uh, and uh, it's got in uh, onions and garlic. And I've had one crop out of it, and I've put in another crop exactly the same bed. And I find that with, with a lot of this aquaponic stuff, that the, you know the old thing where you had to plant tomatoes one year in here and you had to shift them the next time and the yep, next time, yep. you can just about nearly always put them in the same bed. The, uh, over and over, over again. And over uh, again. And another thing with the, with the aquaponics is, uh, where you, you had the space normally um, 12 inches apart, you don't with aquaponics because the, the nutrient is being taken to the root zone where with the old a dirt bed, the nutrient, yeah, the plants had to go and find the, the nutrient. And they yeah, need, absolutely. They space. Well, now yeah. it's being taken to them. As Murray's got with the corn over here, if you swing around and have a look how thick this corn is planted over here, it's, um, you know, only about four inches apart. Well, you couldn't do that in a dirt garden. No, you couldn't. You wouldn't get away with it.